How can an electric car be powered? We talked about this on day one. Hydrogen, Hydrogen fuel cells, absolutely. Yep, what else? At around 9.15, we're gonna to go to the Royal Bros room where you're gonna give a rough draft of your pitch. Two, three outside judges, they're real outside people. Alrighty, so you guys are working today, get with your group and get to work. Project-based learning has the power to transform learning experiences for students while empowering them to solve real problems in their communities. A focus on SREB's powerful PBL practices helps students learn and master significant content and skills while solving an authentic and relevant challenge. These practices include planning authentic and intellectually demanding units of study where students master significant content and skills, utilizing sustained, in-depth inquiry, engaging students in a collaborative, problem-solving process, fostering a classroom environment that supports student ownership, ongoing and purposeful feedback, reflection and revision, and engaging community partners in project planning and implementation. Let's take a closer look at how each of these powerful practices works to support student learning through a project-based learning experience. That might be faster, so what are you doing right now? Trying to get this adhesive to stick to the car. Teachers design a driving question that challenges students to solve a complex problem, think critically, and master course content over an extended period of time. The complex challenge ideally represents what happens in the world outside of school and connects to students' interests. Like you said, if he's not comfortable in it, he's not going to use it if it's too hard. So I first got introduced to the project of Go Baby Go at a continuing education course that I went to for my physical therapy license. Um, the instructor briefly mentioned it. Um, I jotted it down um, to research it later, looked at their websites, and watched his TED Talk presentation. When you push on it, yeah. if a parent needs to pull, so Kristen reached out to me with an email and sent me some video about the Go Baby Go project. And I watched the video in my office and I shut the door and cried because it was so powerful to see what was happening with that project. Immediately I knew I wanted to be involved, so I spent some time trying to think about how I could help her build those cars. They're envisioning removing, this comes out also. I'm very fortunate to work at a technical center, so I have people around me who will be able to help. We have a master electrician who teaches the electrical technology class. I knew I would need his help to actually re rewire some of the aspects of the car. We have the therapeutic services class. I knew they looked at a lot of medical type of issues. So I had several conversations with those instructors to ask them how could that be integrated into their coursework. Click on that 100 and change it to a 10 and that way you can get a better reading. Okay. The students that are in course two were doing the environmentally friendly fleet project. I mean, they're in the middle of the project. And so they've done some work. And today um, we really threw the highly technical piece um, at them, and so they had to use a MyDyno device and do some real road condition driving simulation um, tests. They had to use multiple power sources for that device, and so they had to switch between uh, outlet power and rechargeable batteries and hydrogen fuel cells. We want the students to make a proposal for a particular company for their fleet of vehicles for the future. The easier way to do any flooding thing too is you just make a flat water plane below your terrain and you just raise the water plane yes. manually. I am working with a, a large group of 10th graders and one of the projects we had access to was an SREB project when the levee breaks. Pretty much based around Katrina and, and the levees breaking at that time and the disastrous flooding and pollution that occurred. We saw that as an opportunity to integrate with our science and our language arts and our social studies. For example, our social studies has to do maps and, and mapping and biology saw a great opportunity for ecology and environment uh, language arts has a series of skill sets and they had no problem jumping on board. So we took this, but then we differentiated it. What do you want to do dealing with terrain and water, but still adjusting the effects of pollution, uh, civic results, uh, ramifications, and things like that? And then we let the kids run with it for about five or six weeks. Students engage in a cycle of inquiry and participate in just-in-time enabling learning activities. At the beginning of a PBL unit, a launch ignites students' curiosity and introduces the problem students will be solving. Initial student questions are captured and used to guide the learning process. 
a teacher creates a classroom culture that uses questioning to promote critical thinking and reflection. Somebody remind me what your purpose of this project was, because we talked about a fleet of vehicles. And we have to figure out what type of power for a vehicle will be most efficient for a fleet. For a fleet? And what's a fleet? A fleet of vehicles, like large amount. Like who would have a fleet of vehicles? Like Walmart. Or Walmart Amazon. or Amazon, those little Mercedes vans, right? We're trying to figure out what would the best choice for them be in the future, right? Where we're minimizing environmental impact, but we're also making it cost efficient for them, right? What we want to be able to do today is we want to be able to simulate different road conditions that those people that have those fleet of vehicles could encounter. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna re-plug in the outlet power and see if that's what it was. What? I, I just got a new one of this to try to put the new batteries in it, and it's still not giving a light. We all did the same right wires. We did everything. Is it right, the batteries? We tested the light with the outlet power, and it worked fine. The battery, I just got the charger. And I know we charged them since Wednesday. It could be the battery. And have you tried a different battery pack? Mm -hmm. that, that's the new battery pack. That's the new got. battery pack. Yeah, that's the old one. It might be these alligator clips, too. One. There you go. That's the alligator. Yep, it was the alligator clips. How's the music button coming here? Uh, it's going good. We mapped uh, some more of the functions on the Arduino for the different pins. Yeah, thanks. So, have you got, I mean, is it working now? Oh, I yeah, it's working been, now. I know you've been fighting the code. Yeah. Did you solder this on there yourself? Uh, yes, I did. Where did you? Uh, is it, like, I mean, YouTube, that stuff like that. YouTube? I'm mostly self taught. I just love taking things apart and seeing how they work. So over the years, I just learned how to teach myself, all right, this is how you do that, this is how you do this. An industry standard design process provides a framework to scaffold instruction through a PBL unit that also helps students to work through the problem. As students apply the design process to accomplish the goals of the PBL, they internalize the how and why of using a problem-solving design process. Students work in collaborative teams while using various project management tools similar to those used in a high-functioning workplace environment, such as group contracts, scrum boards, and group roles. So guys, how exactly are we going to present this? We should probably show the start of the presentation, the topography map, then explain some things. And then once we get to the slide with the video, probably like show the VR itself. I don't know when the video would come in, though. And how exactly are we going to present who is going to wear the VR? Are we going to let one of the judges, or...? I mean, if they want to. If not, one of us could. In the presentation, we also want to talk a little bit about, like, our timeline for the Tri-State Order Wars. Yeah. So we have all of that. I can kind of, like, at the beginning, kind of, like, contextualize, you know, what, what it is and how it's affecting everything. Okay, so you're going to start like that. Yeah. And then I'm going to go into the bill, and then... Angelina and Michelle, you're going to go into the visual concept. Okay, and I'll talk about the dam breaking, the model, mm -hmm. and then she'll talk about Google Earth. Mm -hmm. Okay. That should span two minutes. Yeah, all right. Well, in designing the car, we had to make sure that the materials we were using wouldn't be too heavy for the car and break the plastic that the body's made out of. And we had to make sure that all the wiring and the batteries and stuff that we needed to have in there so we could put all the electronics wouldn't also break the car with all the uh, other stuff that we added on. There's a tiny bit of trial and error when we were doing it, but we also are being sure not to, not to build it out of titanium or something insane that would like break or be uncomfortable. As students work through the PBL unit, more of the responsibility of learning transitions to the student while the teacher facilitates the process. Enabling learning activities may shift from teacher-guided to teacher-facilitated with a hum of creative and productive activity permeating the classroom. Students are empowered to take charge of their learning and confidently explore, experience, and create, both individually and within a team. Assessment for learning activities, such as reflective writing or tracking their learning in a professional notebook, support evidence of student growth while providing information to the teacher about what is being learned. So you see how the car's uphill? Look, the engine power, the engine power is getting slower because it's going uphill. Now when you go back to the graph, go back over here, see now look, the, um, the car is going down from the hill, it don't got no, that much load. You see how fast it gets? Now it's going back uphill and the engine power is decreasing. You guys good? Mm -hmm. Yes sir. It looks like it's working, I can hear it humming. 
Yeah, but whenever you get low, whenever you get a lot of low, like you're going up here, it, the engine, like you can hear it slowing down. Yeah. Because again, so just think about that though. Like if you're driving your car, right, and it's in cruise control, mm -hmm. and there's this big hill coming up on the interstate, doesn't your car have to respond to that, right? Yeah. And they're like, oh my gosh, what just happened? Now I still got to go 70, because right? Because you can get that low. And the RPMs will go up. Yeah. We've got Tristan and Jamie working on design. That's the AutoCAD and the drafting softwares. Uh, they are working on printing up any parts that we need. Uh, we've got the music player, which is the coding, which is Andrew and JR. Uh, installation, we've got John, Zach, and Cash. We've got three people on that one because it's a bit of a bigger category. That's actually building it, putting it together, making sure all the pieces fit right. Uh, and then there's project manager, which is me. I'm going around and I'm making sure everything's working right. I'll I'll talk to Mr. Boldness or Mr. Freshour, whoever I need to, to make sure that this project keeps running smoothly. A variety of formative and summative assessments allows the teacher to gauge student mastery of standards and skills and plan for just-in-time adjustments to instruction. Multiple feedback and revision cycles need to be planned so students can identify misconceptions, formulate a plan to move their understanding forward, and satisfy the goals of the PBL unit. Feedback sessions may include peer, teacher, or business partners. Okay, so the first thing uh, we did, or the first modification we made, was extending the, the steel tubes on the bottom since Hayden is taller than the two other kids. So he has four more inches of leg room, and we also added in that five-point harness that all of the other cars need to have. Uh, right now we're working on putting in the backup camera. Are you guys going to put any kind of padding on the metal on the sides? There's going to be some support around his waist to keep him from leaning against it and stuff. So the metal shouldn't be an issue. Yeah, if, if that does become a problem, though, we can definitely put padding on it. Position-wise, um, we want to make sure that he's as upright as possible. Just because if he's back more, he's going to have a hard time visually seeing that. So. I don't know, I know you said that there's a plan to have some of back support behind him. We can probably figure something out about the seat. If it's better for him to be more upright, mm -hmm. we will be able to figure something out. What does these two do? Those are brakes. The oh, brakes right. and this is the tilt, tilt. system. Tilt. So yeah. does he have a certain degree that he likes? Right, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Degree, so he likes yeah. lying back. Whatever. Yeah, just enough to, for him not to have his head on his chest uh, okay. all the time. Okay. So we need to look at the angle. Yeah, and we need to work on his shoulders. Mm -hmm. Business, post-secondary, and community partners may collaborate with teachers to brainstorm or co-plan an authentic problem for the PBL unit. Inviting partners into the classroom to mentor or provide feedback to student groups can provide a unique way for students to learn needed content or help refine their solution from someone who works in the field. Partners may also provide an authentic audience for students to present their final solutions. So I'm Natasha. I'm Ian. My name is Ismail Oremus. And our project is what would happen if the Beaver Dam were to break and what type of dam would be better for the environment and for our community. Lake Lanier, if it was to flood, it would cover about a 14 mile, square mile area, stretching all the way down to the city of Duluth. Entire cities would be destroyed during the flood and many people would lose their homes due to the devastation of the flood. For environmental effects of flooding, we have point pollution, which means it comes from one source, such as the sewer water. And non-point pollution, as in like erosion, that's not coming from one source that's making all the pollution happen. In order to demonstrate our solution of the dam, we used a virtual reality simulator. Here we have the new dam. Can you look? back at it. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is the new dam that we have designed. Um, just quickly, just my feedback, you're so far the best of using some of the, the terrain terminology, that, you know, when you're talking about the non-point versus pinpoint pollution and things like that, so I say you're really rich for that. I, I like the way that you introduced yourself before the presentation. And I think just maybe getting a smoother transition with working with it. I think this was a good practice. That, uh, one thing I would say on a technical side with Lake Lanier is that the Wayne Hill treatment facility, the Mall of Georgia, they pump into the lake. So that may be something to think about. With that, I would say, I mean, there's, there's ways that we can connect you with the people who help run that plan so you can talk to them directly and not have to try to find this sort of information on your own online. I like your ambition to, because um, right now Beaufort Dam is just a two-lane street and there used to be parking and stuff up there, but no one really uses it. But I, I like the ambition to have 
a more occupiable um, scene because I mean that view is amazing um, and having pedestrians up there is, is, is really nice because there's a huge trail network that you can connect into and stuff. So. It will also attract a lot of tourists. Exactly. Okay. Awesome. Golf clap. Bravo. <laughs> So let's change it on now to like what, 80 or 70? Yeah, wait till it goes to 80. 80. Project based learning empowers students to take charge of their learning and to be a driving force in their community through solving real and complex problems.